This is a 2015 Venza guy just bought a few weeks ago. Americans call them mid-size SUVs, right? I mean, it's a lot bigger than my wife's Matrix. Got a lot more room inside it. But to Americans, it's mid-size. And if you know anything about cars, basically, they're on a Toyota Camry chassis engine transmission. So they're reliable as can be. Look under the hood. 2.7 liter, variable valve timing with port injection, normal injection, a simpler car, a timing chain. Now you'll notice you see corrosion on this. Well, it's superficial corrosion because it's living in Indiana, but it came from Chicago. As we look under the car, solid metal, no rust. And look at the exhaust system. It's still real shiny because Toyota knows how to make metal on exhaust systems. My 94 Celica still has the original exhaust system on it. Yes, it's still the original exhaust system. That's how well they make them. It's got 101,000 miles. He paid 14,000 for it. But in November, they were asking 18,000 something for it. They said they stopped making Venzas and they started making them again. And in some people's minds, they think, well, there's something wrong with the Venzas, right? There's nothing wrong with these cars. A car like this, which I haven't found anything wrong with yet. Scan tool showed the only thing problem was a startability concern. And that's because you can see it's got a brand new battery. This car sat on a lot on purchase for three months. The battery's going to go flat. When they go flat, you try to start the car. The computer remembers that. So it trips a code for startability concern. And this shows you that the car lots are not the greatest mechanics. Some don't even have mechanics in that when they replace the battery, they should have gotten a machine like mine, my Autel, plugged it in and erase all the codes because that code will stay in until somebody erases it. And in the case of this one, I've erased it and I've already taken it for a road test, so they didn't come back. It was just because the battery was old and it sat for months, they replaced it. So if you're looking at a used car, you put in a scan tool, it's got a code for startability concern, but it starts perfectly fine. That just means the dodo heads didn't reset it when they replaced the battery. Cars have more memory than they used to. They remember that stuff. So you can always take advantage of that. If you're looking at one, as you plug it in, it's a startability concern. Show it to them, look, it's got this code. It's a problem with start. I don't know if I want to buy this car and try to get them to get the price down. My grandfather was a big horse trader mechanic and he'd do stuff like that all the time. He'd see a car, he didn't care what color it was if he was buying it, but he looked and said, I hate that color. I don't even know if I want to buy this car. He didn't really even care, but use things like that as motivation to try to get the price down. Now, as we go inside, we'll see one of the reasons the guy bought this car and it's a transmission. It it is a six speed electronically controlled automatic transmission. This isn't one of those CVT crappers. Really crisp shifts. And still it gets 27 miles a gallon. For an SUV, that's pretty good gas mileage. I know a lot of guys, you gotta buy the V6. No, you don't. You're gonna see soon this four cylinder engine has plenty enough horsepower and it's simpler. There's less moving parts. There's less things to go wrong. I like the four cylinders. You don't need a big V6. Now, okay, maybe if you're the type of guy that you're going to use this, you're going to put a trailer hitch on it, and you're going to tow your boat and stuff like that, yeah, then you'd probably be better off with a V6 engine. But this guy bought this as his retirement car. He's going to retire in a couple of years. And as you can see, he doesn't even have a trailer hitch hooked up to it. He doesn't care about that. Neither does he care about all-wheel drive. Now, the new ones there hybrid, all-wheel drive. You don't have any choice. That's the only way they're making them. And you're gonna pay extra money for something that you may not wanna pay for that you feel like you don't need. A lot of guys, I don't really want all-wheel drive. You know, I'm not towing anything. I don't need a V6 engine. These fours put out plenty enough horsepower to get where you're going. They hold up. This one doesn't burn any oil. It gets 27 miles a gallon on the highway now. They're basically a Toyota Camry platform with an SUV stuck on it. And everybody knows how reliable the Camrys are. Like I said, all you guys up north know, within a few years, all the aluminum starts to corrode. That's just the way that it goes. Aluminum is gonna corrode. It will cause all this corrosion and stuff. It's just superficial. It doesn't mean anything. So let's get inside, start her up. Starts right up. Now the backup camera is kind of small, nondescript. Most Toyotas don't have the greatest backup cameras. You can see things, but it's nothing great, really. Now you're nice and high-ish up in the air. Not too high, but it's easy to climb into. And like I say, look, it's just a little bitty four-cylinder engine, but it can get up and go if you really want to. Let me look. 
here we are we're at a starting stop and it spins the tires you can see the traction control slipping and coming on and off but it's got plenty enough power to get you where you're going cruise all day at 80 90 miles an hour whatever the speed limit is or a little above it's not gonna hurt anything it's a toyota camry just in the disguise of an suv it's relatively quiet inside and even though it's an suv it's got decent handling characteristics because after all it's a Toyota Camry chassis that it's based upon. It's a nice interior, full carbon fiber, black and chrome. A lot of room in the back seat. Now, this isn't a three row, it's a two row. Do you really need three rows all the time? This guy's retiring. Him and his wife are gonna be riding around this thing all the time. Hey, you can still put three people in the back seat and carry five people. You don't always need three rows. Now, if you need three rows, then you're gonna have to go upscale. And if you're going Toyota upscale, or Lexus or Acura, you're gonna be paying upscale dollars too. You're not gonna find one of those things for $14,000 in the shape that this thing is in. Transmission shifts like a dream, even though it's got 101,000 miles on it. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, it's a boring SUV. Well, it's a Toyota Camry SUV, and if you think that's boring, well, it's boring to have something that gets good gas mods, doesn't burn oil, doesn't break down, still looks nice after years, doesn't have any problems, and still is a pretty zippy vehicle. Now, one of the main reasons this guy bought this car is because he wanted simplicity. He didn't want to buy a newer one that had a hybrid system, all kinds of complex electronics that this one doesn't have hey i gotta say it still has a real parking brake you step on it right no electronic parking brake here just a real one pops back up mechanical it'll last forever it's a later model toyota so it still has traction control you can turn it on or off and check it out it's got a big glove box you can actually put stuff in a whole bunch of stuff not some tiny little useless thing for cheapskates like me these fabric seats can last a long time look these aren't worn at all and the edge isn't worn out lots of room in the back seat got its own heating and air conditioning too they're great vehicles they just for some bizarre reason stopped making them and started making them again and you can take advantage of that because if people think oh they stopped making those for a while people will shy away oh those aren't very well made vehicles right this thing sat for three months as you can see there's nothing wrong with it it sat for three months because they were asking too much money for it we live in a capitalist society if people ask too much money for something guess what it's going to sit there and people aren't going to buy it so it went from 18 down to 14. patience is a virtue when it comes to stuff like that you gotta understand there's all kinds of people out there that have all kinds of deals going on the prices you see in these magazines like Edmunds that give you the value of the car is a load of horse manure they just make up figures last time i read those figures are based on what used car dealers say they sold their cars for no proof of here's the invoice or that just what they say they did some of those are so overly inflated make your head spin guess what if everybody pays that price they'll keep asking that and more so hold your position this thing's sat for three months it was overpriced. Too bad. There's nothing wrong with the car. It wasn't sat there because it was a clunker. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It had the stupid code for startability problem because the battery was old and they had to replace it. Now, the interesting part about this particular car to me is that the guy works for Honda, building Hondas, but he bought a Toyota. <laughs> now, that's sad. He was also looking at some Honda CRVs and stuff, but he couldn't find any. See, here's the thing. The Honda CRVs, they've been making them so long, they got such a good reputation that they will go for a higher price because, oh, they're great. They made them all these years, no problems, right? And it's the same thing with Toyota Camrys. They generally sell pretty fast because they've sold millions and millions of them over all these these decades right but these they stopped making them for a while and it gives people a weird taste in their mouth sure this doesn't have all the bells and whistles all wheel drive and no sunroof whoa gee that's, i'm not gonna buy a car because it doesn't have a sunroof right do you need all wheel drive most people don't is he gonna be pulling anything no a four-cylinder engine is fine so if you can find a diamond in a rough like this thing hey by all means you can get them to come down on price buy it because there's absolutely nothing wrong with this car other than an image that people wrongfully have gotten because they stopped making them and now they're making them again but like i said they're only all-wheel drive they're only hybrids and a lot of people uh, they're kind of iffy on buying something as complex as a hybrid he bought this thing because it's a simpler car it's got port fuel injection 
Doesn't have gasoline direct injection. Doesn't have one of those wonky CVT transmissions. It's a six speed electronically controlled actual automatic transmission. Things that people like, they like the way it drives. It doesn't hunt for gears, like say a 10 speed does. And it doesn't have that motorboat of a CVT where you step on the gas, it's going and then it starts catching up. No, and it's not a CVT with fake gears where it's a CVT, but it pretends to shift gears, which is even wackier. It does feel more like an automatic because you're used to kind of shifting, but it isn't shifting gears because it doesn't have any. It's all an illusion that they created to kind of fool you. So basically, this is no illusion. The guy got a good deal by waiting and arguing over the price, saying, no, oh, that's too high, and then they came down. He bought it, and he's got himself a car that maybe will last him the rest of his life. He says he's retiring in a year or two, and with 100,000 miles, ah, these things are generally good for at least three or 400,000 miles. So, who knows? It might be the last car he buys. And you buy something for 14 grand, and if it's the last car you ever buy, that's the ultimate deal, really. Toyota Priuses, people hate them, people love them. Since they sold millions of them, there's quite a few people who like them. Let's see the truth about this particular one. That's 11 years old. It's got 140,000 miles on it now. She bought it new, put it all on. Now what has she done? Well, she's changed the oil regularly. <laughs> the only thing that she really had to do was change the brake pads, and she just did that. It's got 140, she did it at 136 or so. Because regenerative braking, the brake pads last longer. It's still got the original hybrid battery in the back, and it's obviously still working fine because normal driving, she's getting 45 miles a gallon in this thing. The biggest symptom of a bad hybrid battery in these is your gas mileage starts dropping. She's still getting the same gas mileage, so it's still working. 140,000 miles, 11 years later, and they're a pretty well-made vehicle. There's no arguing that. There's your high voltage system with the orange wires to warn you it's high voltage. Don't be fiddling around with that stuff unless you know what you're doing and you got electrical gloves to wear when you're working on them. And there's the Atkinson Cycle four-cylinder gasoline engine. Now, truth be told, some of these engines do blow head gaskets. But from my experience, it's generally the people that do not take care of the engines. She changes the oils religiously, and the filter, and she doesn't have any problems at all. If you push one of these, the dirty oil wears out the inside of the engine, your head gasket blows, you're looking at a small fortune because, like I said, it's not a normal four-cylinder gas engine, it's an Atkinson cycle engine. Hardly anybody will even work on them outside the dealer. Some of these dealers are going to charge five, six thousand dollars or more doing a head gasket job. They can last a long time, this thing doesn't burn oil, gets 45 miles a gallon, but she's taken care of it, she's the original owner, and she hasn't had any problems with the engine system or the battery system. You can see almost everything on this is original equipment. She hasn't had to change much out now. As we go inside, the AC still works, the heat works. She's got 139,973 miles that she put them all on herself. As you look in the back, she's turned it into a little camper. She's built that and she fits in and has a nice little bed and she goes around the country camping in this thing. Everything works. Even the old fashioned CD player. There we go. It's got a CD player. At least it doesn't have a tape deck. It's a little more modern. You can run EV mode. It won't go very far in EV mode. It's a little hybrid battery. It's made for boost, not for pure propulsion. And then of course you can go eco mode. That a lot of people do because they want to get the best gas mileage. I'll tell you it's an eco mode, but you can also go to Power mode if you want to go a little bit faster. This being a 2012, it's not a racehorse. It goes where you want to go. But realize, the new 2023 Prius has 196 horsepower. So it's a lot faster than this thing is. It gets a little bit better gas mods. That is phenomenal technology. But the gas mods that this gets, it cruises on the highway all day long. You don't have to worry about that. You're not going to win any drag races, but you'll win the race of time because you're going to get really good gas mods with very little maintenance. Like I said, she's done nothing but change the front brakes one time with the high mileage on it, 130 something thousand miles, and change the oil all the time. They are well made. As you can see in the door, they're made in Japan. Always check that out. Don't read the stuff on the top. It will say made in Japan, or look at the VIN number. This is J. J means made in Japan. By everything I can see, she's had really good luck with this vehicle. But, of course, the computer never lies, so we're going to hook it up. 
and we're going to see what's going on electronically. Now, it may be a hybrid car, but it's got the same OBD plug as any other car. Who knows what Prius it is. And we're off to the races. Do a full diagnosis, auto scan. Find a few problems here. It's an old car. We'll start out with the tire pressure monitor. Dead up from transmitter. One not received. Well, she already warned me about that. She's got a bad tire pressure sensor, but the Toyota dealer told her it was going to be around 250 bucks each. That's a thousand smackers if she's got to replace all four. So she's got a tire pressure gauge and measures it. Realize there's batteries inside the transponders in your valve stem assembly. You got to take tire off, take tire apart, put a new one in, reprogram it, all that crap. Times four. Are you really going to spend a thousand bucks? Because they're all going to break. The battery lasted 12 years in the left front one and now hey the other ones will probably go out too who wants to spend a thousand bucks for that it's just stupid this one is a right rear door motor we'll see what craziness that has power window switch of right rear door fault well there it is it goes up and down so do we really care no and the last code is a smart key that has three faults we'll see what that is antenna coil circuit antenna coil circuit Lost communication with panel cluster control module well we'll erase those too just to see you can often get codes for your wireless transponder for starting a car. That's just how they go. As you can see, we push the button. Starts right up. You can hear the fan blowing. It doesn't start because it doesn't need to. Now. It's on the electricity, but it's working fine. All we can tell that is we put it in reverse. It goes backwards. There, now the motor's on, so it starts it. You can see we erased all the codes. See what happens after a road test, but we'll look at the live data here for the engine and the transmission. Go to the live data when it pops up, and here we go. Coolant temperature is normal. Now here's one thing that I gotta warn you about hybrid cars. Yes, since they're hybrids, they're often turning themselves off when they're just sitting there. The engine turns itself off, but the system's still alive. One, you wanna make sure the parking brakes on when you work on it so it doesn't start up and run away on you. And two, if you wanna analyze good live data, you gotta have a good machine like this. It's all tell because since this thing is always turning itself on and off, it's going to be very hard to analyze the engine system just sitting there because it'll keep turning itself off. And you're not going to get the right fuel trim and the milliseconds of the injector firing because the engine will turn itself off and that data will be at zero because it's not running. <laughs> so it is harder to diagnose these things. You got to do a lot more road testing because the engine always is going to be running while you're driving it down the road 40, 50 miles an hour. But just realize they are harder to work on so the guys that know how to work on them they are going to charge you more money to work on there's a lot more work involved in analyzing them and repairing although i do have to say if you do change the oil and you don't allow the head gaskets to blow these atkinson hybrid engines are solid built by toyota they can last a really 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 long time the average engine speed all four cylinders exactly the same 51 199 every single one running perfectly so let's close the hood and take it for a spin put us on this prius it's not dragging on the ground because she had toyota put a lift kit on it so now it's higher as you can see it is higher than the average prius she does take it off-road camping and really you got to consider she's had it lifted but she's still getting 45 miles a gallon and so it didn't really affect the gas mileage all that much we just put it in reverse and you see it automatically turns the electric parking brake off now it's older so there's no backup camera so we gotta look and off we silently go you'll see it's on battery power now but as soon as we step on the gas 15 miles an hour there goes the engine the engine's kicked in this isn't made for running on electricity very far it's more for sneaking up very short distances now since this thing is a little bit higher you don't have to worry that much about medium-sized speed bumps like you do in a regular prius it's very low to the ground you can often rip the plastic off in the front and of course it's a hybrid so it has regenerative braking you can hear it that's the regenerating power. And of course, it's always going to turn itself off when you come to stops when it's charged up. All the electric cars by law today have to make noise and a lot of the hybrids have to make noise, but this is an older one, 2012. They didn't have a law then, so you can sneak up on people. When this thing is driving down the road slow, it doesn't make any noise at all. By law, it didn't have to. We'll see what it does on our little drag strip. Nobody's coming. And we'll look behind us. Nobody's coming. So, we can stop. Let's put it in power mode for speed. Here we go. Not a race car, but let's see what happens. Okay, we're going 45 miles forward. 
Can you pass people on the highway? Yes, you can. Look, it went from 45 to 60 relatively quickly. But I do advise if you're planning on doing any kind of higher speed driving, put it in power mode. Once you get to regular speed, it gets the same gas mileage. It'll just pass better and you'll be able to do better maneuvering than you will if you're in eco mode. If anybody has a new Prius, contact me, scottykilmer at gmail.com. And I will gladly test it out, make a nice video about it. I'd like to see the difference. All in all, considering she's got almost 140,000 miles on this thing, change the brake pads once and oil and filter and that's it. I mean, you can't complain. She only paid like 21,000 bucks for this car when it was new. And the corner's perfectly fine. They're fun little cars to drive. Now, because they always want to get the best gas mileage possible, they are a little bit louder inside because there's not much insulation put into the car because insulation does cut down on road noise but it also weighs more and it will cut down on gas mileage. Now only a little bit, but a lot of people that drive these cars are fanatics and they want to get the absolute best mileage they can. So you kind of sacrifice a little bit extra road noise for better gas mileage. And I kind of like the split back screen so you can see behind you, it made it wide. A 12 year old Prius with almost 140,000 miles from the original owner. So we know the whole history of the car. All it had was front brakes done and a bunch of oil changes. It still runs about exactly the same. It still gets the same gas mileage that it always got. It doesn't burn oil. It gets my head scratching. Why is everybody pushing this electric car crap? Why don't they make more plug-in hybrids which would make more sense to me you get a car like this put a much bigger battery in it so you can drive say 40 or 50 miles and then it would be an electric car for whenever you need it and you recharge it and then when you need to take a trip or the battery goes out it runs on the regular motor and you can drive wherever you want to me that makes a lot more sense when you're in a bad electrical infrastructure drive it on a gasoline engine then when you get to where there's more charging stations, you can charge it up. Now, this isn't a plug-in hybrid. This is a regular hybrid, so you never have to plug it in. It just charges itself up driving around, running off the motor, running off the regenerative braking. But to me, it would make a lot more sense to make a lot of plug-in hybrids, right? 40, 50 miles a day, back and forth to work, charge them up, and in a year, they said, oh, they bought a couple of tanks of gas because every once in a while they use the gas, but they mainly plug it in. Probably won't come to fruition because the government people don't like the idea of still having gasoline engines and electric motors. To me, it makes a lot of sense. And it's Prius, hey, she paid like 21 grand. She's put hardly any money in it, camps in the thing. She got a heck of a deal on that. Most of my customers that got rid of these, this is 139, they'd have like 239 on it. And who could complain if you got 239,000 miles out of a $21,000 car? An 07 Corolla. The guy bought it and immediately made $1,000. He bought the thing for 1,200 bucks had like 130,000 miles on it. The next day he's driving around, wham, he gets hit. The insurance company looks at it, they give him 2,600 bucks to fix it, but he doesn't fix it. They're great vehicles that run a long time. They're not tanks by any stretch of the imagination, but all he did was buff it out. Now, you look here, you can see a little crease, okay, you know, but he didn't put any money into it other than buying a towel and some buffing material. He just told me it was $20 worth of McGuire's paste and buffed it out. So he actually got paid to buy the car. He paid $1,200. He got $26. He made money on the deal. Over a thousand bucks. He got paid to take the car. And that was last year. He's still driving it. It's a Toyota Corolla after all. The reasons he got at such a good price to car in the first place is, as you can see, the standard transmission. There it is. These ones can run forever, can go forever, but unfortunately, the average American today has no idea how to drive a standard transmission. The resale value of the standard transmissions is low. It's low enough that it might behoove you to learn how to drive a standard transmission. It's not hard. You can watch my video where I do it in a Mazda Miata showing people how to drive a standard transmission. If you already know how to drive a car, it's no big deal learning to drive a standard transmission. It makes the car zippier. They're more fun to drive. Just realize it's not hard. On the other hand, if you don't know how to drive a car, I don't advise buying a standard transmission car. Learn how to shift, put it in gear, and learn how to drive at the same time. My father's generation, boy, they're driving these big hulks with no power steering, no power brakes, and they had to learn how to shift, drive, control it. That was really something. 
If you're ready now to drive, all you got to do is learn how to use the shifter and hydraulics. It's so simple these days that it's not a bad idea. Less maintenance, you don't have to worry about an expensive automatic transmission breakdown. You can save a lot of money buying the cars too because nobody knows how to drive them. So the price goes down. When people want something, everybody wants an SUV, the prices go up. If nobody can drive a standard, the prices go down. As we go under the hood, we see perhaps the best engine Toyota ever made for long life. The 1.8 liter engine. They've made various 1.8 liters. This is the same exact engine that's in my wife's Toyota Matrix. Same exact engine. This particular one is the famous 1ZZFE. Now, he changes his own oil. He does all his own work. Change the transmission fluid. Change the brakes and rotors. As you can see. Now, Toyota's didn't need all that much work, but as they get old, anything does. It's all easy to do. And he was smart. The stupid beauty cover's gone. So we don't have that garbage on anymore. But they're easy to work on. There's so many of them out there. So there's a rampant aftermarket. Parts are cheap. There's so many of them out there. So many of the parts are interchangeable. Now, this car came from New Hampshire and he lives in Connecticut. So the first thing he did, and you're gonna have to do this if you buy one of these cars. He changed the brake rotors and the brakes because they rust. Now you can see superficial rust on the wheel ain't gonna hurt anything i mean it's not gonna rust through driving it just looks bad now of course there's no hubcap here this one looks much better because there's a hubcap on it but it's still got the same rust underneath that rust doesn't mean anything realize one thing about rust it likes bare steel bare iron it's gonna attack those parts by 2007 toyota pretty much had anti-rusting in their cars down to perfection for the body parts not like it used to be I had an 81 Corolla and one day the door fell off when I opened it. It had rotted off in Houston because it's so humid. But they know how to make the body in a chassis now. So that's not a problem. Look and listen. Still solid as can be. It's just the bare steel parts are going to rust. So if your rotor's all rusted and its pieces are flaking off of it, change the brake rotors and the brake pads. And if it's missing the hubcap, here's a big trick. Go to a place like AutoZone, buy a set of hubcaps, and put one set of hubcaps on this side so they match. Leave the other set on the other side. Look, you can only see one side of the car at a time, right? I had a house once, it was red on the back and it was gray on the front. It looked nice in the back where it was red and it looked nice in the front where it was gray. You can't see both sides at the same time. That way, You'll have two spares for the side that you bought, say, from AutoZone. And then you'll have one spare for the other side from the one that you had left over. And then when they fall off or break, you don't have to keep buying other ones. I mean, as you can see, hubcaps are just for show. They don't cover anything up. I mean, it's still going to rust underneath there. They don't serve any practical purpose. But you buy a set, they'll last you forever because you can lose some of them and have ones ready for you. As we look inside, yeah. It's an account box car. That's what the Corolla was made for. But it's still got power windows at work. It's got AC, defrost. It's got the crazy Toyota radio. And look, it even had a CD player. This was top of the line in its day. And an ode to modern electronics. It's got a nice little power drop off there. A giant glove box. And speaking of glove boxes, this baby sat for a while in an old falling apart garage full of rats. And when he took the cabin air filter out, the rats had made a nest in it. Luckily, they didn't destroy any of the electronics. He's lucky about that. But that just shows you how hardy these things can be. No sunroof, so it won't leak. Well, for an economy car, look at the room in the back seat. You got a lot of room in these things. Today, people are often whining, oh, I need an SUV for my kids and stuff. Heck, my big two sons grew up in an 81 Ford R Corolla. We went all over the country in that thing, and they had no problems. People sometimes think they need a lot more than they actually do. Now, when it comes to horsepower, we'll start this thing up. With the standard transmission, this little thing is actually quite quick. My wife's Matrix is an automatic. It's the same exact engine only it's an automatic transmission. And for me, it's zippy enough to get us where we're going. It'll cruise all day at 85 if you got a higher speed limit, like out in West Texas. They're not as slow as you'd think, especially with a standard transmission. Now, this is a special racing Corolla. 
That's because he's got a little exhaust manifold leak. He's been messing around with that. And of course, that made his check engine light come on for an inefficient catalytic converter. Before you waste a ton of money buying a catalytic converter because it says inefficient catalytic converter, realize if you have an exhaust leak that lets oxygen enter the system, screws up the entire oxygen sensor system, and will often trip an inefficient catalytic converter code. Before you blow any money, on something as expensive as a catalytic converter, fix all the exhaust leaks. This has got pinhole leaks. You can either weld them up or cut new pieces on. The muffler was replaced before he bought it. And there's just some holes that you need to fix. That's all. It'll run okay. It runs perfectly fine. But it won't pass the emissions test. It does sound a little bit cooler though with that Toyota race engine noise. And of course, for cars at age, it gets phenomenal gas mileage. It gets 37 on the highway, and it'll get 31, 32 in town. They get much better gas mileage in those days than the automatics in town, because you don't get the slippage that an automatic transmission has. You're driving a standard transmission with direct gears. There's, there's no loss of power. An automatic transmission shifts by fluid dynamic pressure, and the torque converter always has some slippage in it, so you are inefficient at lower speed shifting all the time. On a highway, they're relatively the same because the torque converters lock up, but you're gonna get better gas mileage in town with a standard. There's no arguing that. For example, the last time we drove out to Tennessee in the Matrix over there, we did get 37 miles a gallon, which is what he gets on this on the highway. But we don't get 31 in a city. We get mid upper 20s because torque converters are always going to lose a little power to automatics way more. And they're just not as efficient as a standard transmission until you get to top speed where they all work exactly the same now. Now I'm surprised by this. The headlights are still shiny. He did polish them with plexus. That I tell people, and it does work quite well. I do have to say, on my wife's Matrix, they're nice and shiny, but they're replaced from a Chinese <laughs> company, and they were only 50 bucks a piece, and I keep them up so they're okay, but these are still original. He just polished them up. Mind you, it was hiding in a garage. And we have a little additional shot here. This is the rat's nest that was inside the cabin air filter. Yeah, a little rat's nest there. Hey, looks like my hair in the morning. Now, to show how well made these things are, it sat for years in this barn, right? falling down garage barn. He brought a battery because the guy says, well, it doesn't start. He put the batter in, he turned the key, boom, started right up. I mean, that's the insanity of these cars. This is the replacement of the Volkswagen Beetle, only they sold a lot more than the Beetles did. They sold over 50 million of these. That's why people buy them, because they'll sit forever, they'll start, they'll run. They don't leave you stranded. And yeah, I mean, this one is start of the beginning when they started to look a little bit better. The Matrix was a little snazzier. My mother had one in Buffalo. And you know what? They didn't even put snow tires on the front of the thing. It's front wheel drive. They went through there without snow tires. They don't want to plow roads in Buffalo, so they didn't even bother putting snow tires in the car. They just drove it as it is. You put snow tires on it, you'll be able to afford wherever you want to go. In an older one, it has electronic technology you want, like ignition coils, but it doesn't have a lot of the modern crap that people hate, like GDI fuel injectors that have a thousand something PSI instead of these that run on like 54 pounds pressure. What's gonna last longer, G, you know? <laughs> All that pressure, less pressure, of course, the less pressure you have. I mean, think about it. On a highway, 37 miles a gallon. I see GDI cars that don't do that good. GDI does add some efficiency, but mainly it's more for power. The gas mileage is not that difference between this, which is an 07, and a lot of the modern ones. It really doesn't make all that much difference. So I'll take it for a spin. Now we're gonna see what this baby can do, or not do, whatever the case may be. All right, here we go. Ooh, it's squealing tires. <laughs> this thing ain't even doing burnouts. Let me tell you, these things are made solid. And with the standard transmission, they're a heck of a lot of fun to drive. I like the little steering wheel too. It gives you some serious driving capabilities. I mean, this thing is actually fun to drive with the standard. I'm not joking either. It's a lot more fun than my Matrix. Oh, I wish my Matrix was a standard transmission. But then again, I bought it for my wife for her birthday and she hates standards. So <laughs> it's gonna stay in autumn. Now I realize one thing, and I'm not making this up, a modified version of this engine is used in the small Lotuses. Well, it used to be Lotuses went bankrupt. I guess the Chinese own them. They're going to make electric cars eventually. But this engine, it's small, but don't poo-poo it. You know, it's not a 200 mile an hour engine, but driving around, it's got a lot of zip. You'd be surprised. So there you have it. A car that the guy ended up making over $1,000 on it the day after he bought it. He didn't sell it, he kept the car. It runs that great, and 
he got paid to buy it, basically. <laughs> and he's put practically nothing in it either. Rotors, $20 of polish. I mean, these things are amazing little cars. It was just a year ago that he bought it. You think there's no deals out there? If you look hard enough, there's always a deal somewhere. Somebody wants cash. And the only way most people can sell anything for any kind of cash is by selling a car. Use TVs, use whatever, go for nothing. But somebody needs serious cash, they're gonna sell a car, and if they really need cash fast, they're gonna sell it at whoever comes with money first. He was the first guy to come with money, and he bought it. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.